Now let's have a look at how you might use the three different ways of creating grades of tone in a simple painting. Now the first thing that I want to do with this particular painting is looking at the front of the building here we've got a nice soft light effect so I'm going to use a wet into wet technique to put in the first grade of tone. So I'm just wetting down the whole building area and that can come right through into the land as well. And now in with some tone, I'm going to use Payne's Grey throughout for this, just so that we can read the tones easier. And starting with a fairly pale tone, I'll get some of the soft light. And we've also got on there some um, shadow from trees, some cast shadow from some trees. So again, we can use this to capture those soft shapes. Here we go. Just draw across with the brush. Then we can increase the tone slightly in, in one or two areas. Now, don't want to overdo it at this stage. Uh, we are only dealing with the lighter end of the tonal scale. But that's okay for the first wash. Now let's use the overlaying technique uh, to build up some tones on top of this wash. And the first thing that I want to do is create a, a hard edged shadow side to this building. So if I try and roughly match the tone that we've got on there, then it will duplicate itself naturally. This is the shadow edge can paint right over the door and any details or features at this stage. So now with this wash, we're creating form, creating form and creating shapes and more depth. And once that's dry, then we can work back into that with more overlaying to create further tones and details. Now I need to look for some edges and here at the bottom of the building where that meets the ground we've got darker tones on the building so I'm using the overlaying technique again now I've got to try and match the tone that we've got on the paper and we can work this in picking out this edge where the, the lighter ground is meeting the bottom of this building Now remember, we're building up tones and we're building up details at the same time. So we could maybe put in one or two brick shapes in there, just where the, just to suggest one or two bits of stonework, and then let them run into the main body of the wash. And the same tone for some of this ground down here. We've got a lot of textures going on and details going on down here so just using a stippling technique there and softening out here and there so just using this tone blending it out to soften some of these shapes maybe even using a touch of the overlaying technique on the front of this building just to suggest again one or two bits of stone work now we've got two further tones in the doorway area. We've got the real dark interior, which I'm going to reserve for the last application. But just on the recess of the door is a slightly darker tone to what we've already got on here. So again, the overlaying technique, I can paint in the whole door area quite confidently. And so long as I don't go full strength with this, that tells me that I do have room to get stronger tones in there. Now, with a similar tone, I'm going to use the blocking in technique. So using just one particular tone to fill in an area. And here we've got some trees. Which we can suggest just with this tone. These trees are... I mean, they're of this strength and they're also quite intricate so 
it's not really worthwhile building these up in several layers of watercolour. You might as well just put the relevant strength straight in there. And then maybe one or two extra bits just in this foreground, again layering the washers, layering the tones, each one showing through the next and so on, and increasing that tone in natural tonal scales. This is what really brings the painting to life in terms of tone. So we'll let that dry and then there's just one more application of dark tone. Okay, now for the final application of tone and first thing is to get the real dark in this doorway. And if you remember, we didn't go full strength in there, so that will give me a layer of tone in there. We've got the shadow on the side of the building, then slightly darker in the recess of the door and darker still right in that door. So reserve the darkest tone right until the end there. And the last thing I want to do is to just create some contrast by blocking in some of this dark tone around the building. I've just invented some trees around here just to give it some contrast and to show how light against dark really does work. And there we go. Think about where you might use these three methods in your own paintings. This painting utilises contrast to create this very, very striking effect of light. So the first thing is to put some sky in. Now it's not a very strong sky and I'm going to alter what we've got here in the scene just using some Naples yellow. Now I've really got to be careful that this does not go over the front mountain, the one that's in the light. That's really going to be left as white paper. And I'm using a very loose scumbling technique with this colour, straight in with some cobalt blue. This mountain in the background is going to be much darker, so that will cover any brush marks that are left in there. And that's okay, I'll let that dry and I can build up the washers on the background. Now I'm going to put in the mountain here and for that I'm going to use an overlayering technique, starting with the lightest tone, which happens to be, in this case, rather a mid to mid dark strength of tone. And it's these things that you've really got to w watch out for uh, when you work in. Use your tonal strip and check off the strength of the tone before you actually start. Now the thing here is we've got a mountain covered in snow. It's the same color as the snow in the foreground, but because it's in shadow and it, and it is in real deep shadow, then it is really, really quite strong and probably stronger than you would initially think. At this stage, it's going to look really quite strong and you, and you might think, well, this is really far too strong. I'm going to have to wash that out and add water to it and weaken it down. Not at all. This really is strong. Keep confident and put the dark tones in. So this is really important to give us the effect of the light and the contrast. Plenty of paint mixed up ready. I'm not going to run out of paint. And once this wash is complete, then I'll allow it to dry and build up all the rot detail using the overlayering technique. Wow, look at that. It's already looking like a, a snow scene. And now I'm going to put the detail onto the mountain using the same colours, French ultramarine and light red. So matching this tone on the paper and that will replicate itself. I'm building up the detail here, um, working right the way across the mountain in this, in this careful way. But if you don't replicate these tones by overlayering, if you get it too weak or too strong, then either your detail is going to disappear, uh, which means you'll have to go over it again, uh, or it's going to be too strong, too much contrast, and then it will almost jump off the page. So you've really got to try and get these tones 
just right. And now the shadows in the foreground. I'm using the same colours as I did for the background, but this time much paler. I'm working on, on the snow here. This is uh, a white colour and the white of the snow tends to reflect ultraviolet and it's also affected by atmosphere. So white normally throws a blue or violet shadow. And I'm just looking where the light intensity is in, in parts of these shadows where the light's bouncing back into the shadow then it does become paler. So I'm just using some clean water on the brush to soften out in places. Not, not everywhere but just in one or two places. Once those shadows are dry then I can put the real strong tones on. It's very important to look for the shadows and put them in before the final darks. And finally for these darkest rocks. Now for this particular section of the painting I'm using some French ultramarine mixed with burnt sienna and this gives me a really very really really uh, strong dark grey colour. And this has to be the darkest tone in the painting. This is where the contrast is going to come in. I think that'll do. It really does show what you can do with tone and contrast. It's quite frightening to put some of these dark tones into a painting but it really does work. Well I really hope I've managed to help you to improve your watercolours with tone and contrast. Now available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. The extended version of today's workshop is now available to order on DVD from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.